how to go from nine months to eight weeks to nine days. And I think most people in, in the audience left. Welcome to the Architecture Corner. Today will our two guests, Gregor Wikstam and Joachim Limbom, talk about the need for speed to market. Joachim and Gregor, welcome. Yeah, indeed. I would say that the, the first thing is that, in a way, what we're seeing right now is the position where when there is an opportunity for, for a client, when there is a business opportunity, there is a window in, in the market, at that point, it's too late to prepare. You really need to make sure that in the point when the opportunity arises, that you are ready to act. And therefore, you would need to change the way you're, you're seeing IT, the way you're seeing the development of services in, in business and IT in a totally different way. Uh, Joachim, did you read my blog post on change is the only constant in Agile? I think so, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, did, yeah. I, I, I did a little bit of research and it seems that the average change rate in 1970 was about 1% per month. Mm -hmm. In 1980 it was about 2%. Uh, zoom up to the dot-com era of uh, 2000, mm -hmm. the average change rate was 10%. And currently, 20% change per month is not unheard of. No. No, I've seen the same. And, and the point is that I remember, I think it was about 10 years ago, uh, at the seminar we kept, kept in my, uh, somewhere, uh, one of the colleagues who talked about nine, 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 how to go from nine months to eight weeks to nine days. And I think most people in, in the audience left. How would you do things that, that normally took nine months, or the cycle time was nine months, going down to nine weeks, going down to nine days? That was laughable. Today, it's relevant. Yeah, absolutely, and, and uh, sometimes it's not even... Uh, if you have a factory and your factory has stopped because there is a bug somewhere mm -hmm. in your planning system or your uh, factory, it doesn't have to be in the factory system, it could be in the ERP system. Yeah. So definitely. the customer orders are not getting fed into the factory system. Yeah. So you have a bug and your factory has stopped. Do you have nine days? No. No. Nine hours? Nine, nine hour, minutes? Nine, nine, min nine, nine minutes, and, and, and mm -hmm. uh, if you create a bug fix, are you ready to, to deploy that without proper testing and so on? No, no. So, so whatever business you're in, you can be in a situation where you don't have nine months and not nine weeks and not nine days, but maximum nine hours. Yeah, indeed. That's one aspect. Another aspect would be security. I mean, we are seeing in a situation where we are going into this zero day forever situation, where the security threats on different kinds of IT landscapes comes down that that is a constant threat with a zero day perspective. And how do you answer that? How do you regard or how do you handle the situation when you, as you say, need to identify the problem, fix the problem, test out, quality assure, deploy into production in hours? You know, here, there is a conflict here because uh, how would you want to protect yourself from a zero day threat? I, I guess it would be through diversity, mm -hmm. through having different systems. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, having many systems uh, takes... Require uh, different skills different skills yeah, yeah. And, and, and it will hit the speed to market because you will have to do it once or twice or, 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 or three times. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there, there is a uh, balance there between uh, security and, and speed to market. Indeed, it is. Uh, but the point is that I think that most corporations, they don't really get this right now. As you say, they have the requirements, they see the change rate, but the mindset is still like what I talked about 10 years ago. It's water fornish, you think you have time, you have deployed processes, procedures and tools which more or less need days, weeks, months to, to succeed. But the point is, the reality right now is so different. You really need to shift your entire mindset, your entire approach, your entire setup in order to handle this. You really need, you really need to speed to market and, and, and it starts with simple things like, like uh, incident resolution time for, for ordinary tickets. Mm -hmm. So uh, it used to be that, that, that many companies were running their IT on a kind of reduced cost basis, and, and that was all they care about. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more companies are moving to a value-based IT where they look at, okay, so this employee has been waiting for three hours. What's the impact on What's us? What's the cost of that? What's yeah. the cost of that? And, and, and that makes you reduce the, the time for that. Uh, it used to be that it took three months uh, to get the new server. Yeah. Well, you had to order yeah, it yeah, from, from yeah, manufacturer, yeah. they had to produce it, they ship it, they install it. Maybe there wasn't enough rack space, maybe there wasn't enough uh, electricity, cooling, uh, etc. Yeah. Yeah, et yeah. It was taking a lot of time. Now it takes one, two, three seconds 
Yeah. Log on to the site, uh, click new server, and you have a new server. Yeah, and full automated uh, provisioning. Yeah, and that's relative today, not only in cloud, cloud environments, but also internal cloud or internal virtualization. We are in that situation right now. You can do self, uh, self service, so to say. So, so, and that's yeah. perfect today. so I think we agree there's an enormous need for speed to market. Yeah. There, there, there are, uh, we have moved to a situation where we're doing better at the basics, but uh, customers come and complain that, you know, we're not agile enough, it takes too long to push things to market. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and when I look at what they're doing, they're doing maybe weekly releases. They're, they're really fast, they have high quality, and that's not the problem. It's not, the problem is not in how they work uh, or the infrastructure. The problem is that no one says no. The, the, it, it takes maybe two weeks, three weeks, f when you get to the front of the queue mm -hmm. until your, your innovation is on the market. Okay. But, but waiting in queue, of course, is, it takes, yeah. takes too long. Yeah, yeah it, it takes 12, 12 months, yeah. uh, 24 months. Uh, and, and that It's a bit like healthcare. I mean, we see excellent healthcare in this country once you're serviced. Mm. But before servicing, you well could get worse. And uh, and the thing is that that you need to uh, say no to people. You need mm -hmm. to say, okay, this is not valuable enough, and you know that yeah. goes away instead of giving people the false impression. It's, it's like you know this late for uh, children's play where you you put cards in in, in uh, upside down and you you know mm -hmm. uh, you just swap them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you you if it's in the ocean, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's in the backlog. Yeah, in the backlog. It's, and it disappears in the backlog. And I think also one aspect of this is, of course, going down to accept and claim the law. Okay, there is a solution for it. There is an option for a hundred varieties. But do they actually add value? What is the simplest way? What's the simplest way, exactly? What's most cost-effective way? Mm. But that's one aspect. And I think another aspect, which is more or less in my area, goes down to the surroundings of the system. There is normally, in most corporations we see today, there is an extremely complex landscape with lots and lots of systems. We can talk about hundreds, thousands, and, thousands. and even tens of thousands of systems around. Not to talk about the number of integration points. I mean, I, I work with one client, they have 25,000 integrations, and nobody knows why. They know exactly what they're doing. What, I mean, the, the volumes and the speeds and the requirements, those are perfect. But why are they there? And if I want to change something, something nobody knows. Uh, can this uh, speed of change be a, a mindset because if you look at small entrepreneur driven firms they have an idea they implement it around within one week yeah of course it's a mindset but the problem is the small part of they have no legacy that's one thing there, there is no complex ongoing landscape they have started on a much more clean platform and that is, i think it's the back to the platform thinking you need to understand what the platform can give you that's exactly what the startups are having they are starting on a platform much much higher and much more clear than most. Uh, it's it, 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 it's not about like IT legacy. That, no, I, no, 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 it is about legacy with uh, your products that, that mm -hmm. you're offering to the market. It is about your contracts. So you already have twenty thousand customers running on a contract that is set up for the way you used to deliver twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But I think actually I've seen at least two corporations in Sweden right now which are doing simplification, starting on the business side, taking away old products, old services. And we're talking about 80% reduction in one case, not even in another. Think away 90% of all products they have. Mm. Clearing out the table and focusing when to do the new systems, they will deliver the services that will bring the money in the future, not what brought the money 20 years ago. Mm. And that, that's the point. Is this a big difference between companies that offer services to um, both business and consumer compared to a car company? A car company they have a new model, they don't produce the old model. They have one month stop to retool the factory and then they just produce the new one. But they, they, they never produce, well, they very seldom produce new models. They produce evolutions of previous models. Yeah, uh, but they don't, the, the previous services, they don't sell that. No, but that, that, is, that is a very um, big difference between product and car I mean, this car is, is manufactured, it's sold, then it's in the market for 10, 10 20, 30 years in, in best case. And the life cycle of a product is totally different from the life cycle of a service. So I think it's very hard to compare this. And, and, and in procurement as well. Yeah. People think that you can procure IT services like you procure products. And it's like, exactly. you know, the, this yeah. is a car, 
and you know we want help with something and then you try to describe it like if it's a car and you can't no. and, and that you get you know you you want to buy a, 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 an 18 wheel truck and and you end up with with a, a bike yeah exactly because I, it's a so cheaper option I, 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 indeed i mean i had one one situation a few years ago when procurement and applied actually they told us i mean they really didn't get what we were, what we were buying they were buying a service for us but the, the, this guy here is like, okay, what I'm buying, it's a CD-ROM. It, 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 it's just this CD-ROM I want to buy. And I went, no, you can't compare a service to a CD-ROM. It's totally different. And he continued knowing about this for weeks. No, I want to buy this CD-ROM with some fragments on it. No, you want a core service modernizing your entire company. You can't compare. And this guy, he never got it. Sorry. So, so buying the right thing is something helping speed to market. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I saw this um, uh, white paper at Capgemini, and maybe we can link to it uh, later, Katimir, uh, about, uh, I think it's called the digital CIO, and it's about, uh, the, the, it describes how a, a, a client in Spain were able, by, by doing a heavy rationalization of, of their landscape, they were able to increase their speed to market. Not, not, just by, not just because it's a simpler landscape that is easier to manage, but also because they were able to free up so much of their IT spend. Mm -hmm. So just just on infrastructure cut, they had eighty percent of their IT spend freed up for innovation. Yeah, and and, and also and in this specific case, I think much of it goes from it's not cost reduction; it's value based. They think about the value of IT rather than just cutting costs. I think that is one of the core parts of it. Mm. So, what's your conclusion now with the speed to market? Can you give a short? Short answer on that. I think what Greta started with is, is really key. Change is the only constant. You need to come to change all, on all levels. My, my conclusion is that it's not enough to do it in the IT department. It's the whole company. And, and it, it's often not the, the technology that is the problem. Indeed. Going back to the platform. Bring platforms rather than solutions. Then, then you're ready to change. Uh, thank you very much. It's been interesting to listen to you and hope to see you again. Thank you. Thank you.